Before we get back to real time, I just wanted to share a few very strong moments with you since we had our uh, ribbon cutting ceremony in New York. It has been amazing. As you all know, we have a diversified uh, choice of uh, charities that we are visiting, and we have really been touched very much by every of the charity we have visited. It was like we had children with cancer, we had breast cancer, we had uh, seniors. Uh, I mean, it was just unbelievable. But they were two things, like actually three things that really were almost heartbreaking. And um, one of those, the first one was Monday at the place in Chicago where we went to the Chicago Lighthouse. And those people, they are kind, but they want to work. They really do whatever they can. They make so much effort. And they put themselves out there. And the problem is, it's a big discrimination against them. Even so, they are fully capable. They have computers and everything that they can uh, work on. And even the, the Chicago Lighthouse gets them to the companies so that uh, people that are blind can work for them. And only about a third of blind people, which is about uh, 1,200,000 in the United States that are fully blind, only about a third get an occupation. The rest does not because they are blind. And I mean, I was very touched because they made something for the whole bus, with the whole bus logo on it. And it's made from A to C. Every little detail of this watch, including printing, packaging, putting it together, everything has been done by blind people. And they made that especially for the whole bus. So someday, when we get our Hope Center up, that will be at the entrance as a symbol that there is no discrimination anymore, that all together it can be strong. Another thing at that place, and I must say I'm very much ashamed of, was I saw like a music room and they say they will play music for us. And I, see, I saw people coming in, they were not only blind, but they had other disabilities too. And I say, are they really going to play music? They were bent over, they could barely walk, they, like, I was ashamed of my thoughts. And you should have seen the demeanor change when they started to play music. They sang, they played music, they were, I mean, they were blind, but there was their passion, and you could not see anymore there was a handicap. So they even do CDs. It was just unbelievable. So I felt truly blessed. And so that was one of the very, very strong events. Another event was Tuesday after we drove, Sean and I, we drove from Chicago through the night to DC. We arrived in the morning to just be ready for our next event, the Street Sense. Street Sense is an organization that helps homeless people, they produce actually, like a, they offer the homeless to come in, the homeless write newspapers, they print the newspapers, and they sell the newspapers, so it's a job for them, and they have the chance to make money. They pay 35 cents per newspaper, and they sell it for one dollar. So Sean, Kayin, who will come also and join us a little bit later, and I, we walk for one day in the shoes of homeless. We wore daily jackets, which signals like we are homeless, and we stopped, stood at the street corners all day to sell those newspapers. And I am like one way thrilled about the kindness that we received from certain people, which was about five to 10 percent. And I was shocked about the discrimination about the rudeness, about the nasty words that we heard from other people. And, I mean, I had makeup on, I, I was not, like, you could not really see anything, but the comments we got, that was unbelievable. And I think 
we should put an end to that because those homeless people, it's not that you're home often. It's not that you're choice. I spoke to one of the homeless people. She was a top executive, lost her job, and she's homeless in seven months. It can hit any one of us. So for me, next day, every homeless person I saw, I had to pass by and distribute money. I could not help it. But this is just a little reminder how society sometimes treats people. And um, I hope that we can make that stop and we can bring that awareness to the community that they want to work. They do their best to really help themselves. Then the next one, I mean, like I said, they are all wonderful um, charities, but the next one was we went to the Walter V Medical, uh, Army Medical Center in DC, and in the afternoon we spent time with the uh, World War II veterans at the memorial for the World War II and, and celebrated with them the year ceremony, and it was an unbelievable feeling. I mean, that togetherness and the stories we heard from those soldiers that were about to lose their legs at the hospital or lost already their legs, but they wanted to do it to give us the freedom. They do that. They don't ask any questions. And they say, you know, we don't want to be the heroes. It's because we just love our country. We want to bring that to our country. We want to keep us free. And so they may be going to lose their legs. Maybe they're going to keep them. Some are maybe uh, like a for life uh, handicap, but they still, they did not waste any tears and say, well, look at us. No, they were so proud to do that for our country. And that should be a reminder for all of us. If we can help each other, if we can just open the door, reach out to the hands and say, no, let me help you. What can I do for you? If all of us do that, if we talk about paying forward, that we're going to make a huge difference. And we never know how big it's going to be because sometimes we just touch one person, but we don't know how far we reach out. We can touch their whole family, their whole, all their friends, everyone. So it's like a ripple effect. And that's why I want to encourage everyone, and that's why we do this tour. We want to bring people together. The ones that know me, my friends, they know I'm all about all this trying to every, always bring everyone together. It's about friendship. It's about generosity. We don't ask how much does it cost. No. It's like, it's about giving. And if we all can light up the torch, unfortunately we cannot do that in here, but most of the places we went, we had the torch, and we lighted it up, and we passed on the fire as a symbol that uh, we want to light up the fire, we want to pass on the fire, the passion, and so that if we all pass that on, the world will be a better place and a place filled with light. So with having said that, I wanted to thank you so much again for being here tonight. And I have a special surprise right afterwards. I have actually, Daryl, would you like to come up here? I saw him come in during our, during my speech. Daryl is my neighbor, and a few months ago, Daryl was so courageous, he came over and he said, Kalina, I would like to invite you to a special event. My friend and I, we are creative dancers, and I would like to invite you to come and see me. And so I went with him to Fredericksburg. I watched him dance, him and his partner, and I just fell in love with him. So I offered him to take him to one of the places that we have one of our events, and we chose the Visual Arts Center. What better place than a, a Visual Arts Center to have your dance? He was supposed to dance today with his partner. Unfortunately, I got a phone call from his partner's mom, and she's badly sick, so Daryl was a little bit disappointed because he was looking so much forward to it, so I said, Daryl! This is all new better. Why don't we do it anyways? <laughs> so I think <laughs> we just want to improvise that. Is that okay with you? And I hope you're going to enjoy Daryl, my neighbor. And thank you again so much for coming. And we will 